Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to the kitchen. It has been a busy day and do you know what? I've tried to actually bring you along for the whole day in London and it just got a little bit too hectic, a little bit too here, too there, forgot to film this, forgot to film that and actually just decided to wait until I got home and then come and speak to you guys. I have, as I said, just got home. It's already dark, it's about five o'clock, and I need to finish off a few emails. I equally need to cook some dinner, and I just thought it would be nice to switch the camera on and do it with you. So tonight is one of those evenings where I have got so much in the fridge and actually nothing really goes together. I bought some beautiful chicken supremes but they are fresh. I bought them from the butchers today so those will probably be fine for tomorrow night. And I have a ridiculous amount of vegetables. I have also got to be honest, I am not very well at the moment. I had a bladder infection of which I thought I could just, you know, press on and work through, drink loads of water, but um, unfortunately it's now gone into my kidneys, which is not great. So, I mean, the back pain. I'm not sleeping at all because I have this constant urge of needing to go to the loo. I know far too much information and you guys are probably like, <laughs> Lena, this is not glamorous whatsoever. Um, but yes, I finally got some medication and do you know what, this evening I just fancy something that's homey, hearty, nutritional but also carby and that's just going to satisfy exactly the cravings that I have. So I have an abundance of vegetables and we are going to cook the most delicious, the most almighty vegetarian pasta. It's going to be gluten free. I've got some incredible pastas that I almost collect. It's almost like a bit of an obsession. I don't eat it that often, but when I do, it's really gorgeous to go to the cupboard and just see all of these spectacular, beautiful Italian and special pastas in the cupboard. I know I'm getting so <laughs> passionate about pasta. And then, do you know what? I went to Bista on Sunday and I bought the most beautiful Stella McCartney tweed ensemble. It does, however, need a little bit of a tweak, but I suppose that's a little bit bister for you. You just gotta go with what size they have. You either go there and find everything, or you go the next time and there's not that much. And it's always the time that you go and you're like, nope, I'm not spending any money. It's the time you find everything. So I will show you what that suit looks like because it is absolutely beautiful. I've also had candle delivery, but we'll get to that in a little bit. When it comes to making the most delicious base of a pasta, it's all about the spices, onions and garlic and really allowing it to stew in and the flavours of the spices coming out and blending in to the onions. So let's get started because the longer you leave it simmering, the more flavoursome and delicious the pasta will be. As you guys know, I adore garlic. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm literally just slicing the garlic into little bits and then we will prepare the onions and the shallots. Do you know the last time I did a cook along with me, I had so many questions about the recipes and where I got them from, my passion, how I started cooking. And do you know what? My mum is the most exceptional cook. She doesn't cook that often because she has help. <laughs> and I just learned from her. I learned from watching. I learned from my grandmother. I learned from the wonderful um, ladies that used to help my parents with dinner parties and caterers. I've just always had this passion for food and for flavours. I really am an absolute foodie, hence why I'm not as skinny as a rake. But off to find an onion. Found an onion and we're now just going to dice that up along with the shallots. So yeah, I've just always learned on the job to be honest with you. Trial and error. I love following a recipe. I find it very therapeutic. I also adore the presentation of food. I think there is a huge part of it that comes from the way food looks 
and if it looks beautiful and it smells beautiful if you use beautiful ingredients that all go together theoretically it should then taste delicious that is the key that is what we're striving for i haven't yet invested in the onion goggles so if i cry i apologize in advance my chopping skills are not that of a pro literally just get it done safely efficiently and quickly because i have got quite a lot of work to get done this evening i've got to get a load of admin done but do you know what i i feel actually a little bit less pressure at the moment i've managed to get as much filming as i possibly can done on the lead up to cyber week is it in focus? It's in focus. Thank goodness for that. My goodness me, I thought I'd just be warbling away. Oh no, I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon. I just said oh, that the onions weren't that bad and they are horrendous. <laughs> I need to get these goggles. Okay, so we're gonna do the garlic and the onions and I brought some spices back from Morocco and I'm thinking to maybe put a little bit of the paprika. I shouldn't be waving my knife around. The fragrance is insane. Actually, I've noticed walking back into the house, I need to pop them in little containers because the smell of the kitchen smells like we're making some delicious tagine and they're currently in little plastic bags. Anyway, I'm just popping just cutting the shallots pretty roughly, nothing special or fancy. I am just cooking for Marcus and myself this evening. So I've done one onion, four garlic cloves and two shallots. I'm now going to go and find myself a large saucepan. I just live by these Le Creuses. You invest well in good quality products and this was actually my mother's i believe and it's so old it's amazing though i use it for so many different things i'm going to pop it on the arga with a touch of olive oil and we're going to sizzle all of these onions again just normal olive oil from waitrose or sainsbury's be generous with the olive oil because i promise you the onions will taste delicious and i'm now going to just Sweat the onions, the garlic, and the shallots together with the spices. Let's have a little look in the spice drawer. I will bring you with me. And we're going to have a little look. We're going Italian themed this evening. So, oregano, we need. What do we need? This is my spice drawer. So we are going to put a little bit of paprika, but I'm going to use the other paprika, a touch of cayenne pepper to give it a kick. We need oregano, which doesn't seem to be in here. I've got some lovely Italian seasoning. And then what else can we put in here? Oh, oregano. Fantastic. So those are all the spices that I'm going to be putting in there. And I'm also going to add a dash of chili oil. It will just create a little bit more of a kick, but it won't be too fiery at the beginning. It will be a little bit more of an aftertaste. And that's because you are cooking into the onions. So essentially when you eat something straight away, you're like, oh my gosh, that's hot or spicy. And it's burning your taste buds. I hate that. Also, Marcus does no spice at all. So when he first eats something, initially it can't be spicy, but then it has a little bit of a kick afterwards. Mm, that's when it's the best. I could put a couple of these bad boys in. It's really important not to let your onions burn. Oh, I've left a little bit of the onion skin in there. Lovely. Rather crispy. <laughs> so really sweat them down. Make sure all the olive oil is coating those shallots, garlic and onions. And now we can add in the Italian seasoning. So I'm going to give a little bit of sprinkling of the Schwartz Italian seasoning. We're gonna pop a little bit of oregano in. I just literally eyeball this. And then I'm going to add a touch of cayenne pepper, literally a sprinkle because this little bad boy is rather fiery. And then I'm going to get my Moroccan spices. 
and add a touch of paprika. Now this stuff is absolutely amazing. It's so fragrant. And look at the colour. I don't believe we need too much. That should be enough. Oh golly, this is when the brag breaks and it all goes in. No. Nope. Now I'm going to add a touch more olive oil just to bind it all together. And this is when the flavours mix together and taste sensational. Now it's so important to allow your seasoning to cook. So I've just added a touch more olive oil and I'm now just letting those spices really combine together and almost marinate the onions. Gosh, it smells heavenly already. I've just taken those off of the heat because I don't want them to burn and I'm now just preparing the aubergines. I like my aubergines rather chunky, so I have cut them like so. Hopefully you can see that. And then we're going to add red and yellow peppers. These peppers, I think they're called Regano peppers, I'm not sure, the long skinny ones. Touch of courgette, some tomatoes, some cherry tomatoes, and then we'll do a last sweep of the fridge to see if there are any pesky little vegetables hiding at the back. But I'm just going to pop these to one side for the moment and then just prepare the other vegetables. <laughs> A little bit more of a ragu and we really want to stew the vegetables down I am actually going to add all of them at the same time now I am fully aware the vegetables cook all at different times but because we want it to be quite soft we don't want any of them crunchy the more of a vegetable stew the better so I've just added all of that in and I'm going to almost fry them at the beginning, definitely sweat them down, and then we'll start adding the liquid. And then we'll keep it on the simmer side with all of the liquids, the passata, the tomatoes, and let the magic happen. Mm, the smells incredible already. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Again, it doesn't look pretty yet. Wait until later, and my presentation will be better than this. But this is what it looks like at the moment, and I'm just mixing it all up so those spices are covering all of those delicious vegetables. Whilst that's sweating down, I'm now just gonna go ahead and chop the tomatoes. Now it's key to try and keep all the liquid and the moisture from the tomatoes on the board because it makes such a difference to our pasta sauce. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then come back. Now my tomatoes are all chopped. And, and the vegetables are sizzling away behind me. Added the baked tomatoes in along with the juice. And the juice from the tomatoes have almost straight away been absorbed by those aubergines and courgettes. So again, the flavor of those vegetables is just getting better and better. I'm now going to go for a little hunt in the butler's pantry to find a suitable red wine to go in our pasta sauce. Right, we need some lights on. Hmm. We have a magnum of the governor. Delicious red wine, if any of you know. But I don't know how long this has been open. Smells fine. Looks fine. Mm. Tastes fine. Right, let's go and pop a little bit of the governor in the pasta sauce and it really makes such a difference. I just popped the red wine in and this is not an alcoholic pasta dish. Let me just say that for one. The red wine is really just to add flavor and at this point we have added it and it's almost boiling. We're gonna let it boil and that actually burns off the alcohol just leaving that delicious red wine flavor behind. <laughs> Now with any dish, it's all about seasoning. So I'm just going to add a little bit of sea salt and some cracked pepper. In terms of passata, I actually just used chopped tomatoes. I'm gonna to use two tins and I'm going to add some water. I'm then gonna pop a lid on it 
and forget about it. <laughs> I'm gonna get a little bit of work done, get some emails done, and then I'm going to show you the most beautiful candle delivery. Let's just add this. And then the water, this is when I open it. And it wasn't very wise wearing cream cashmere, was it? I can see this being splat all up my cashmere. Or alternatively, when I'm trying to eat it, could be very naughty. I'm going to sit on the sofa watching the crown whilst eating my pasta this evening. We're having a very chilled one. We're going to have, the Argus slugs are going to become sofa slugs and um, we are going to be joining them. <laughs> this is what it should start to look like. So it's now starting to resemble a pasta sauce. And once we add a touch more water, add a lid and let it simmer for probably another hour, it will be absolutely delicious. <laughs> Whilst that is stewing away beautifully, I just wanted to show you a candle brand that I came across. This is not a paid ad, this is not sponsored at all, it's just I absolutely love the product. I was blown away by these candles because of the quality and the craftsmanship and the price point is fantastic. So the brand is called Golden Hour London and they specialize in luxury candles and they truly are the epitome of luxury. They are 100% natural, they are hand poured, but it's the details that really make them special. Whoopsie. But it's the details that really make this candle brand stand out. So this is what it looks like. Now just to show you the candle a little bit closer up, you've got the beautiful branding on the front. This is one of their white candles and all the scents either come in either white or in a very dark chocolate, almost black color. They have the beautiful and heavy gold lid with their branding engraved. And on the inside, this is what I mean by detail. They've hand painted the wick gold. And on the inside it says, Golden Hour England. Light is one of the most powerful symbols for hope, positivity and inclusivity. We have hand blended each candle to bring you the quintessential elements of our English heritage. Let our creations transport you, and they do just that. They are a fantastic price point for such a luxurious product. Amazing for gifting. I do believe they're taking part in Black Fridays, but let me just check that one out, and if they are, I will pop it in the description box below. I've also been sent the Private Members Club candle. Sounds very bougie. What does this one? This has honey and tobacco. Gosh, I'm looking forward to smelling that. And then this one is the British Racing Green. And the scent is black lily and sandalwood. Gosh. They're just such beautiful products. They also come with matches, little matches and long matches to ensure that you don't burn yourself. And they're also just so elegant to have around the house. I will leave all the details and the website link in the description box below. So definitely go and have a little look at the website, scan about. If you're in the market for candles, then I highly, highly recommend. How could I forget? It is six o'clock. And these little boys, who wants some food? You want some dinner? Who wants dinner? Who wants a little bit of dinner? Oh, the stretchies. Come on then. Starving people. Starving people. Come on then. Come on then. Let's go. Dinner time. Pooty, 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 pooty. Oh my goodness me, I literally look <laughs> utterly ridiculous. I'm just making the dog's dinner, of course. And I'm just running a little bit of hot water because in the evening they like to have a little bit of what I call puppy porridge. So they have their biscuits in their bowl, their biscuits, their kibble, and we feed them a brand called the Sausage Dog Sanctuary. So it is 100% natural ingredients. There are no extras added in, which I think is so important. If I could, I would definitely feed my dogs a raw diet, but 
that does come with other complications and I have one dog that can't have it and it was a whole fiasco. So we have finally found a food that they all love and that is so good for them. If I keep talking, they're gonna be going crazy. So let's give these little munchkins their dinner. Right, Rafi, you're first. Rafi, good boy. Lancelot, Lancelot, good boy. Odie, Odie, the little puppy porridge, good boy. And Wiggy, you're such a good little chap. And that's yours, baby boy. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. Oh, it's delicious, a little bit of puppy porridge. Now he has to have this bowl because he woofs it down and then is sick and then obviously re-eats his sick, which is just so vile. And he's a rather porky person, mummy. We are working on it and he is on a diet and on an exercise regime. But he's a little bit like me. He was not born to be skinny. <laughs> Now the dogs are fed and dinner is almost ready. I'm going to quickly get some emails done and then I will come back and we will pop the whole thing together. I am back and we are cooking the pasta. Now, as I was saying earlier, I travel the world and I pick up pastas everywhere. And I take great pleasure because when I cook pasta, I want it to be exceptional. As I've said, I don't eat pasta that often, but when I do, I want it to be delicious. Now this is Giuseppe Coco pasta. They are the large shells, and I think it's going to go perfectly with my vegetable ragu. The water is boiling over here. I've got my sous chefs and Arca slugs down here, and we're just going to add it to the boiling water for 12 minutes. Now, I just taste test this and just make sure that it is slightly al dente, that's how we like it anyway, and then we will put it all together and make it look beautiful. Just adding a little bit of salt into the pasta. Marcus is on the Parmesan grating duty. He's doing a fantastic job. This is just normal Parmesan you get from the supermarket. It's going to be delicious on the top. I just sprinkled a touch of basil, which will finish it off. Now I'm going to mix that in and then actually garnish the top of the pasta. I've also just popped the bowls in the warming oven and the pasta is cooking away and it smells heavenly. My sous chefs living the life of Riley. <laughs> Raffi, are you comfortable in there? Oh, my schlotty. Are you gorgeous people? You're a nightmare, but you're gorgeous. I'm you. I'm you. <laughs> you're so sweet. Hey, what do you think? We're cooking a delicious pasta. Is that mummy? I don't want pasta. But they have got B-O-N-E's in the scullery. They know the word far too well, so I can't say it just yet because they're actually defrosting. I picked them up from the butchers on my way home this evening and they are going to go crazy. These are my pasta bowls. I'm now going to sprinkle a touch of Parmesan on the top just to finish it off to perfection. And then I'm going to simply garnish with a beautiful fresh basil. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my homemade pasta finished. Hi everybody, happy Saturday. It is Saturday afternoon at five to 10 in the afternoon. It's pitch black outside, how frightening is that? The winters are really, really closing in and it is definitely one of my favorite times of year. I adore the lead up to Christmas and Christmas in our household is huge. We almost save our pennies to make December really special and as we live just outside London, we do dip in and dip out. I got up very early, took the dogs out and I've been sat on my computer either researching brand proposals, brand negotiations for see Cyber Week and then the lead up to Christmas, lots of vlogs, vlog ideas, vlog plans, because this whole vlogmas fiasco is literally nerve-wracking. I do need to try and fit it in with my work schedule. So I'm thinking to post on a Monday, a Wednesday and a Sunday. 
So please let me know in the comments below. I hope you forgive me that I'm not going to be able to post every day. I just, I don't know. I just want to be able to give you guys the best possible vlogs. And I feel that if I'm trying to put something out there every single day, something's got to give. Either my job, my clients, or YouTube, or Instagram. Oh, anyway. Oh, so three times a week, so I'm gonna do a mini vlogma. So again, let me know what you think in the comments below. And also, if you have any ideas or anything that you think, oh, Leonora must do that, then definitely, definitely let me know. But as I said, Christmas is truly spectacular in our household. Everything from tea at Claridge's to dinner or lunch at the Ritz. We go to the opera, we go to the theater, ballet. We really do save our pennies and go big in December. Our Christmas install is huge. We go to the Covent Garden flower market and buy all the stuff. My mother and I do the majority of it ourselves and then one of my very very good friends who is an extremely talented florist comes and just puts their professional touch on it. So as I said I am so looking forward to sharing so much with you but I am wobbling on and we're not even anywhere near Christmas and I'm very mindful that I told you about a very special Stella McCartney suit that I recently bought at Vista Village. So I really wanted to show it to you. First of all, I bought it. This was not an ad, I did not get a discount, but other than the fact that it is discounted anyway because it's at Vista Village, which is amazing. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to show it to you. This is the enormous Stella McCartney bag. And I always get so lucky in Stella at Vista Village. They always have just such beautiful pieces. And obviously Stella McCartney are known for their famous tailoring. So whenever something's in there, whether I'm in the market to buy it or not, I definitely pick it up because they are pieces that last a lifetime in my wardrobe and definitely staples. I mean, the cream trousers that I always show you and I pair with everything, they are Stella McCartney and they are fabulous. So when I saw this, you know, I had to have it. I was also with my father and my husband and I said, no, I shouldn't. I came here today with you guys and it's all about you and I was not meant to spend any money. I'm not looking for anything. It's always the way. My father was like, it looks beautiful, darling. You must have that. Would you like it for Christmas? I was like, no, I've already got a wish list. Thanks very much. Anyway, <sighs> I came out with it and let's pop it on. <laughs> now this is the color and the texture of the beautiful cloth that they have used. And as I said, it is the famous tailoring from the Stella McCartney team. So they are their classic high-waisted trousers. The length is three quarters. So they're slightly cut off and they're wide leg and high-waisted. Now they are too big for me, so I am going to have to have them slightly tweaked, but I've got a fabulous tailor down in Marlow, so I'm sure he can do that for me. They almost remind me a little bit of Breeks. And then we have the exquisite blazer. Now, I think I'm going to be able to style this with so many different things, not only as the most incredible matching ensemble. I'm gonna make it sexy, I'm gonna make it classy. Oh, it's just going to be gorgeous. Right, enough talking, I'm going to put it on. Are you ready for this? This is not only what I believe so elegant and classy, it's also got that little touch of sexiness. They go together so beautifully well and I'm obsessed with the tailoring. So this is what it looks like together. It's perfect on the arm, perfect on the shoulder, however it does just need a slight nip either at the back seam or the side seam. Now my mother gave me the most beautiful pair of chocolate brown ostrich leather Gucci court heels. Whew, that was a bit of a mouthful. About five years ago and I thought oh god they're a bit OTT. So I popped them at the back of my wardrobe and I saw them about three months ago and was like oh, 
they are spectacular. It's funny how things come back into fashion. And again, it's always when I say, invest wisely in classic pieces and they never ever go out of fashion. So I've had them tarted up slightly, repolished, new little doodahs on the heels. Heel studs? I'm not sure that's right. But anyway, and they are going to match this suit to perfection. I haven't yet decided what I'm going to do underneath. I'm either going to pop on maybe just a bustier or possibly a rather sexy chocolate la perla bra. I'm not one to show my bra. I'd rather go without and make sure that there is no possible chance of any slippage or even any side view. Mm -mm, we don't do that. So either nothing and make sure that there is going to be no chance of slippage or possibly a bustier or a chocolate bra. Hmm, I'm not sure. Do I rock it and go sexy without or pop something underneath? Let me know what you guys think, but let's put these shoes on. Now these are the vintage Gucci court heels. Are they not just spectacular? She also has the matching bag in their attic, so I've got to go for a little rummage to find it. So let's pop them on. So the perfect heel height. They're not too high. I would say they're about 100 millimeters, not the sort of 120 going to break your ankle. So they're definitely wearing all day. I think this outfit is perfect for so many different things. It makes me feel so confident, powerful, yet sexy. I could walk into any room wearing this outfit. I definitely think Stella McCartney as a whole, I feel like that is their entire brand ethos. They create such beautiful garments that make you feel just amazing. I love the brand so much. As I said, this is not sponsored. It's not paid. I don't earn commission. I bought this with my own money, with no discount other than it was at Vista Village, so obviously it's an outlet. And it is amazing, so if you haven't been to Vista Village, I would highly, highly recommend it. But I hope you guys would agree with me that this outfit is killer. Now, I've got the most beautiful jacket from Pietro Costello that I think would look stunning, just over the shoulder. And then I would finish off with the matching bag, however, I don't have that here. So I'm gonna have a little rummage in my bag wardrobe and see what we have that will go with this spectacular ensemble. And this is how I would style the Stella McCartney suit with my mother's vintage Gucci shoes, my classic Chanel mini flat bag, and just by draping a cashmere coat over the shoulders, it has just elevated this look to perfection. Now this is my favorite Pieta Costello piece. I do believe they are taking part in Black Friday and I also have a personal discount code which I can share with you guys. I am the face of the brand, so although this isn't sponsored, obviously I do work with them and I do get discounts and privileges, so I will leave everything down below. And I promise you, if you invest in a piece like this, you will have it forever. You will gift it down to generations to come and it will elevate every single look and make everything look as luxurious as possible. It's such a shame I have nowhere to go in this outfit. However, I do have an event in mind. It's a very special one for me. It's been in the pipeline for months and I cannot wait to share it with you. Obviously it's Christmas coming up and I do think it's going to be my most special event I've ever done. So as I said, I just can't wait to take you along with me. So we've done a cook along, vegetarian style. We've fed the dogs, a serious candle unboxing and a spectacular Stella McCartney styling session. So that brings this vlog to an end. I truly hope you guys have enjoyed watching. If you have, please hit the like and subscribe. It just lets me know that you're enjoying my content and gives me the confidence to just keep creating more. So as always, sending you so much love and thank you for watching.